Shalom brothers and sisters. So I want to do again today <laughs> touch on what some would call sensationalist news. So we're going to talk about signs in the heavens and some of the news stories that have come out from NASA and science. And yes, I know we can't trust NASA, but sometimes these things all align correctly. And let's just discuss that and look into it a little bit. And we'll delve into a couple of scriptures and discuss and we'll look at a little bit of what TW Tram says about the comet that's coming. So let's just dive into it. The first one says, A star explosion will be visible in the night sky, according to astronomers. This is not the April 8th and this is not the blood moon. This is a star explosion that's coming closer towards September, towards their Rosh Hashanah time this year. Between now and September, have your eyes peeled for a truly spectacular night show. Not for regular fireworks, but a rare celestial event, a nova explosion 3,000 light years away. Predicted to flare into the night sky and become visible to the naked eye in the northern hemisphere. NASA says the nova explosion is essentially when a binary star system explodes. It will emanate from the T. Coronae Borealis star system and will be as bright as the North Star for around a week. Then the bright light will die down and won't appear again until 80 years in the future, the time of a generation, Psalm 90 verse 10. The last time the star system went nova was in 1946, two years before Israel became a nation in a single day. So I'm not saying it's anything special or sensationalist or anything. I'm saying signs in the heavens and signs in the heavens that take place in 2024 that are rare and won't occur again for a certain amount of time are definitely things we want to take note of because the heavens are the works of his hands and they are made for signs and seasons and times. So the blood moon Purim eclipse of March 25th. Right, This one slipped right under the radar because all of us are so focused on April 8th and how it so beautifully ties in with so many coincidences to the previous two eclipses over America causing the great big Aleph to be written over the nation. So while we were all focused on that, there's a blood moon Purim eclipse taking place on March the 25th. Now... On a total side issue, you should know by now that when the moon is involved, it's speaking to Israel. And when it's the sun, it's speaking to the nations. That's generally how it pans out biblically and the way it's usually being used. During the next couple of months, so many amazing things are going to happen in the heavens. Many. For example, during the great American eclipse of 2024 on April the 8th, the sun, the moon, and seven, seven, other planets in our solar system will line up in the sky almost as if the entire solar system will be screaming that this is a once in a lifetime event. Seven, the number seven right before the final week of seven, halfway through that seven, three and a half years in the abomination of desolation and from that time going forward to the end, a time such as no man has ever seen before of great tribulation. Do not go into your homes and even find a cloak or a tunic or pack your bags. Flee. It will be a terrible, terrible time. Seven. Three and a half, three and a half. And now, seven will line up in a line at the same time as April 8th, solar eclipse. Interesting. Just, I mean, it's just a coincidence. Nothing to worry about. We should get back to TV, rather. A penumbral lunar eclipse will take place. Now, look at these dates. On Monday, March the 25th, 2024, it will be visible to the naked eye as 95.57% of the moon will be immersed in Earth's penumbral shadow. In the upcoming lunar eclipse, the Earth's shadow will block out 97% of the moon's surface. The eclipse will be a blood moon. The result of atmospheric conditions that give the moon a reddish tint rather than black, blah, 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 NASA. Okay, it'll be red. It's a blood moon. Now the date. On top of everything else, this blood moon eclipse coincides with Purim. The dates on the Jewish calendar for their feast. The first day of Purim goes from sundown on March 23rd 
to sundown on March 24th. The first lunar eclipse on March 25th will coincide with the Jewish holiday of Purim. Pastor Boltz noted it was fitting that the moon should be eclipsed on Purim as Esther literally means hidden. So what if we are taken and hidden? As it says, we will be in the day of judgment. And again, calm yourselves. I'm not saying we're going to be raptured on Purim on exactly the 25th. I'm saying it is interesting that at a time when we're so close to the rapture, it could be. Esther means hidden, and at the time of Purim, there's going to be a blood moon warning. In the book of Esther, we read that Purim was a time when God delivered the people of Israel from being destroyed by their enemies. Could this blood moon eclipse during Purim be a sign that the people of Israel are about to be delivered once again from their enemies at the moment? Maybe someone can come on the scene soon and help to facilitate a peace treaty for seven years. Who knows? It's interesting. Coincidence. We also know that in late March, the Devil Comet, what the world's calling it, will be racing through the sky as the blood moon eclipse is happening. Same time. Look up into the night sky this month and you'll get a glimpse of a massive comet that will be visible to the naked eye. According to Space.com, the comet 12P Pons Brooks, also known as Devil Comet, will be visible to most people on Earth while it completes its 71-year orbit around the sun. I'm consistently seeing the numbers 70 and 80, 70 and 80 the whole time in these different things. And the Lord's telling us a generation is running in that time frame. So why are all these things 70, 80, 70, 80 the whole time? It is interesting. By the end of March, the comet will be able to be seen with the naked eye at dusk in the northern hemisphere against the zodiacal constellation Aries in the western horizon, according to space.com. It will continue to make its extraordinarily bright presence known during next month's total solar eclipse. And by April the 21st will arrive at its closest distance to the sun before fading from sight in the northern hemisphere in May. It will then be visible from the southern hemisphere before disappearing from view from Earth until 2095. So not to be seen again. In this part of mankind's history. So the run of the devil comet will be taking place during the blood moon Purim eclipse on March 25th and the total solar eclipse on April 8th. NASA is telling us that at some point between right now and September a star 3000 light years away will explode. The explosion will be seen with the naked eye. So again as you can see Lots of things happening in the heavens. And now if you really want to drill into the details and go, and look, some of the watchmen are giving these details. The actual names of all these star systems and comets and rocks traveling through the skies and how they all correlate with what we're experiencing, expecting, seeing all at the same time right now. So now I just want to give you a few little things from uh, our brother T.W. Tram out of his latest Comet Ponds Brook that were really awesome for me and encouraging. Go and have a read. I'm not going to read the whole thing, just a few of the exciting bits for you. Number one, Lamb Constellation. During the April 8 eclipse, Comet Ponds Brook will be visible in the nearby constellation Aries, the sign of the Lamb that depicts Jesus as the Redeemer judge and king seated on the heavenly throne revelation 5 6 7 the name meaning of the comet comet Ponsbrook is named after its discoverers jean lee pon and william brooks the name pon means the way or path maker way maker miracle worker promise keeper anyway jesus is the way or path to salvation john 14 6 matthew 7 13 and 14 the name brooks means flowing stream or torrent and has a dual connotation pertaining to the waters of life that flow from the Lamb and judgment's flood unleashed on the wicked. Revelation 7, 17, 22, 1, Matthew 24, 37 to 39, Isaiah 59 verse 19. So exciting right there. Then prophetic orbit. Comet Ponsbrook visits earth every 71st year. 
This is significant because God promised the Jews in Babylon that after 70 years, he would visit them and bring them home to Jerusalem. After 70 years have completed, I will visit you and fulfill my good promise to bring you home. Jeremiah 29 verse 10. The Jews homecoming after 70 years foreshadows the ultimate homecoming, the rapture during a jubilee year. Leviticus 25 verse 10. With this in mind, it's striking that Ponsbrook's 2024 appearance coincides with the 70th jubilee since the Jews first entered the promised land and began counting the 49-year cycle again. 1407 BC plus 70 jubilees, 3430 years equals 2024. Coincidence. Again, why are we even looking at the sky or the stars or the signs as he made them? It makes no sense. What are the odds that the comet with a 70-year orbit would appear during Israel's 70th jubilee? It's, it's just That's just how these things happen. The bull comet. Now, this is the, the contra now to the world calling it the devil comet. Recent outbursts by Comet Ponsbrooks have caused the comet to resemble horns. While the horns have been compared to devil horns, they also look like the horns of a bull. This is significant because in the biblical zodiac or Mazaroth, Taurus the bull is the picture of Jesus, the judge and ruler, rushing forward with mighty energy and wrath to pierce through his enemies. Viewing Pons Brooks as a charging bull, it is fitting that just before Passover, the comet will reach perihelion or maximum brightness as it enters the constellation Taurus. Additionally, the eclipse's path of totality intersects the paths of previous eclipses in 2017 and 2023 and form the first letter of the Hebrew alphabet, the Aleph, which is the pictograph of a bull. God. Now that makes more sense for me than Devil Comet. All right. So really, really exciting connections Brother Tram has given us there. And then it is nearest in June. On June the 2nd, Comet Pons Brooks will reach its closest point to Earth at a distance of 144 million miles. The number 144 evokes the 144,000 virgins or first fruits of Israel who are sealed for redemption before God's judgment. Revelation 7.14 Exciting, right? How can you not be excited by things like that? How can you not be jumping up and down by things like that? And yes, I hear a lot of you saying, yeah, no, these signs are only for the tribulation and what, what, what. Go read it again. Yes, a lot of these things are going to happen in tribulation, but a lot of them are happening now as warning too. And a lot of the times, a lot of the times, straight through the Bible and history, God has used the sky, the stars, the sun and the moon as warnings, portents, signs for the peoples and the nations and the Jews to show us and tell us what's coming and what's happening. That is how he designed them. Think about the wise men studying the heavens. And by studying the heavens and the signs in the heavens, they were able to figure out that the king was being born, the Redeemer, Jesus Christ. And they could travel following those signs in the heavens to where he was born. And even the Jewish scribes, Pharisees, Sadducees, rabbis, leaders, Sanhedrin, none of them figured it out. But the people studying the stars, they figured it out. They were looking. I'd rather be on the part of the looking than the non-looking. Joel 2 verse 30 to 31, and I will show wonders in the heavens and on earth, blood and fire and columns of smoke. The sun shall be turned into darkness and the moon to blood before the great and awesome day of the Lord comes. Okay. Luke 21, 25, and there will be signs in the sun, moon and stars and on the earth, distress of nations in perplexity because of the roaring of the sea and of the waves. Acts 2 verse 19. And I will show wonders in the heavens above and signs on the earth below, blood, fire, and vapor of smoke. Luke 21, 11. There will be great earthquakes in various places, famines and pestilences, and there will be terrors and great signs from heaven. 
Psalms 147 verse 4. He determines the number of the stars. He gives to all of them their names. Genesis 1.14, And God said, Let there be lights in the expanse of the heavens to separate the day from the night, and let them be for, number one, signs, and for seasons, and for days and years. Job 38, verse 31 to 33, Can you bind the chains of the Pleiades? Or loose the cords of Orion? Can you lead forth the Mazaroth in their season? Can you guide the bear with its children? Do you know the ordinances of the heavens? Can you establish their rule on the earth? What I'm trying to get across to you here from a biblical perspective is yes, some of those signs are specifically only for the tribulation. Well done. Got it. That does not mean shut your eyes and now we are not looking at the third temple. We're not looking at the red ephors. We're not looking at signs in the heavens. We're not looking at the Revelation 12 sign. We're not looking at blood moon tetrads and the way everything works out. We're not looking at the fact that they all correlate to Jewish feast days. We're not looking at nothing in the heavens because we're waiting for the tribulation. And when the tribulation begins, boom, suddenly everyone's going to figure out to look at the heavens. No. They're learning now through the watchman community and those that are awake and watching and waiting for their crown in being excited and waiting upon the Lord. Those people are learning even if they're not ready. And in the tribulation, they will have learned from us to look and study and understand the signs in the heavens and know what's coming and start connecting the dots to revelation and the prophecy for their time. And they will realize and understand the days, the months, the weeks, the times, the judgments. And they will know God has used the heavens always. So ultimately, from my heart with lots of love, if you don't want to look at them because you think it's only in the tribulation, don't look. Read your Bible. There's enough in there to sustain you. There's enough warnings in there. The signs around us that I'm sharing with you on a daily basis that I cannot even keep up with, and I'm barely scratching the surface here, that should be enough to keep you excited. But for those who are looking up at the heavens and the skies and seeing all these signs, leave them to do so. It's extra excitement. And there are things up there that are just way too much to just be coincidences, people. We serve a mighty God. He formed the belts of Orion and the Pleiades and he leads the bear and its cubs and he fashioned them all. He put them where he wants them. He moves them as he wants across the skies. He knows them by name. He is God, the great I am. And every single way that he chooses to speak, I, Sholto, will be listening and watching and looking all the time. So be excited. Keep looking up. There is a lot, a lot happening this year. Shalom.